so I don't know how everybody else feels about this, but I always feel that the push of electric vehicles, electric cars has been really foisted upon us in the past 10 years or so by climate conscious governments and billionaires who are looking to cash in on people's climate consciousness. But actually when I was looking into the market in more detail, I realized that in China at least, the start of the EV industry stretches all the way back to the early noughties. So in 2002, the government announced that it was going to invest 800 million yuan or 106 million US dollars over the next few years for the development of electric vehicles as a springboard to profitability for China's auto industry. So not only were they going to be giving special grants and loans, subsidies, things like that directly to electric vehicle companies, but they also explicitly stated that they will engage in technological exchanges involving electric vehicles with the United States, Germany, Japan, France and Italy to help push domestic development of such vehicles. So after these announcements were made, a huge amount of new electric vehicle companies were launched and we're just going to talk about one very briefly. It's probably one that you've heard of before. It's called BYD. It's become somewhat of a household name in the electric vehicle industry for good and bad reasons. BYD actually started out as a battery manufacturer in 1995 and actually only pivoted to making electric cars in 2002 after they bought a failing car manufacturer. After several failed attempts to build a marketable EV, they finally achieved success in 2005 when they launched their first consumer model, the F3. They went on to develop the first dual mode hybrid electric vehicle, the F3DM, in December 2008. So China's sudden investment into electric vehicles makes a bit more sense when you look at their five year plans. So for people who don't know what that is, essentially every five years, China announces a new five year plan. This is something that they've had since they adopted the Soviet model in the 1950s. And this helps them set the course for development in all industries. So this basically decides what the government is going to invest in. So in the early noughties, like many other governments, China was becoming more interested in how to cut back on emissions. And the most obvious ways to do that were to cut back immediately on heavy pollutants. So energy factories and cars. In the 11th five-year plan, which was from 2006 to 2010, China aimed to bring its discharge of emissions and pollutants down by 20%. So this included obviously transitioning to renewable energy sources like wind and solar and improving on what they described as energy conservation practices. So this sort of led to the government changing the amount that they were going to give to the electric vehicle industry from being 800 million yuan to 10 billion yuan, which is a much more significant investment. And their goal was to release over 600,000 electric vehicles into the Chinese market by 2012. They also announced their support for other initiatives like electric vehicle public transportation. And they set up some pilot cities as well in order to be the ones to sort of like introduce and test the viability of these new schemes. So immediately following these announcements, obviously there was a huge flurry of new electric vehicle companies being established in China. The Beijing automotive industry, Cherry Auto, lots of brands that you've never heard of before in your life. But just because there was investment available and people were interested in EVs, it doesn't mean that it was all smooth sailing from the get go. If you look at it realistically, the initial figure of 800 million yuan or $106 million is really just not that much money. And even 10 billion yuan, which is about 1 billion US dollars to cover the entire of China and to create 600,000 electric vehicles is not a lot. If we look at 2011 in particular, the EV industry was struggling <laughs> in China. The BYD F3DM model sold less than 100 vehicles domestically and only 11 internationally and they had to cut back on their own targets, which were 800,000 vehicles to 600,000 vehicles. But in reality, they only managed to make half a million vehicles that year anyway. The reason that the market was sort of wavering in the first instance was because of lack of readiness, basically, for people to start driving electric vehicles. There weren't a lot of things like charging stations available. And also at the time, there was a focus on quantity over quality. And this is summarised quite nicely by this quote from McKinsey, who did some analysis on this. 
Despite a concerted effort by the government and domestic automakers, the expected surge in electric vehicle production and sales has not occurred. The government's 12th five-year plan targets ownership of 5 million battery electric vehicles and plug-in hybrid electric vehicles by 2020, yet just 1,000 of these vehicles were registered in the third quarter of 2011. Despite investments totaling nearly 10 billion renminbi, or 1.57 billion US dollars, in battery R&D by Chinese automakers and suppliers, few Chinese vendors are qualified to provide electric vehicle batteries to the auto industry. Government-sponsored subsidies have failed to stimulate consumer demand. Electric vehicle buyers in Shenzhen got 120,000 renminbi per vehicle, but automakers sold only about 600 such vehicles in 2011. Planned infrastructure rollouts have also failed to materialize. The Ministry of Science and Technology has called for the construction of more than 400,000 charging piles by 2015, yet the State Grid Corporation of China and China Southern Power Grid combined built only 16,000 in 2011. As a result, China has fallen behind not only its own goals, but other major automotive markets in its readiness to support an electric vehicle industry. But despite these setbacks, continued investment in the industry did help it pick up again. The government made some moves to toughen up production laws, make electric vehicles more viable and focus on the quality over the quantity. They reduced subsidies and focused more on research and development. So in 2016, you have the company NEO who launched the EP9, which is kind of like a sexy racing car that at the time was the fastest EV in the world. And this was sort of like a beacon that EVs were becoming not only cool, but also potentially replacements for your standard car. Growth in the electric vehicle industry in China picked up again after the Made in China 2025 announcement, where electric vehicles were listed as one of the key industries that the government is targeting to become a world leader in. Now, the government is relying more on market forces than internal incentives. So they've made that switch from having to rely on subsidizing and funding these companies and this growth and the research directly to just letting the market pay for itself. By 2020, Tesla, which is obviously a famous US electric car company, had a huge surge in their stocks. So Chinese electric car companies were also able to kind of ride this wave of interest in electric vehicles. At this point, you have several car companies in China that are able to debut on stock markets in the US. So you have NEO and Xpeng, which went public on the New York Stock Exchange, and then you have Li Auto, which debuted on the Nasdaq. So all of their stock were able to rise concurrently because of the interest in EVs, and we'll go a little bit more into detail about that in a bit. But what this shows also is that even companies that lacked brand recognition were still able to capitalize on the growth in general in the industry. Today, the electric vehicle market or industry in China is so big that even players like Xiaomi, which is, if you don't know who they are, they basically make the rival telephones to the iPhone in China. So they have made so much money that they're now starting to make their own electric vehicles, which is crazy because they are making more than enough of, of like phones and tablets. But it just goes to show how important and how profitable the electric vehicle industry is becoming, especially in China, where you have 10 million electric vehicles being sold worldwide, 60% of which were sold in China.